Hello and welcome back to A-Level Physics. Today we're going to be covering the limitations of physical measurements. This includes errors, uncertainties and definitions of key phrases. Let's begin with errors. There are two categories of errors in practicals that we deal with in physics, random and systematic. When you're asked in the exam to state the type of error, there is only these two. Don't be tempted to write human or anything other than random or systematic. Random errors occur occasionally and don't repeat. Some examples of random errors are parallax errors, careless in making readings, or simply doing the experiment wrong. A systematic error repeats itself by the same amount each reading. Some examples are zero error in the experiment, so that's where the zero on your instrument isn't actually zero. Inaccurately calibrated equipment or incorrect method all the way through. We try to be as precise and accurate as we can when we do these experiments, so as to reduce random error as much as possible, we repeat the experiment. This brings the mean value closer to the true value as more repetitions are done. We can never fully get rid of random errors, but we can try and minimize the effect by repeating. In contrast, we can fully eliminate systematic errors by changing the method if it's been done incorrectly and by calibrating or changing the instruments used as they could be inaccurate. Now, definitions of key phrases. I won't lie, this is by far the worst part of at least this topic because it's quite simply just remembering a bunch of definitions. So, accuracy. A measurement or result is considered accurate if it is judged to be close to the true value. So, how close your result is to the real value in English. Repeatability. A measurement is repeatable if the original experimenter repeats the investigation using the same method and equipment and obtains the same results. Reproducibility. A measurement is reproducible if the investigation is repeated by another person or by using different equipment or techniques and the same results are obtained. Resolution. This is the smallest change in the quantity being measured a piece of equipment can measure. It's the smallest visible change in your instrument. So for example, your ruler has a resolution of one millimeter. Precision. Precise measurements are ones in which there are very little spread about the mean value. You can actually be very, very precise, but inaccurate at the same time. It's like playing darts and you aim for the bullseye and you hit the same spot every time, but it's a spot on the wall, not the dartboard when you're aiming for the bullseye. Now moving on to uncertainty. Uncertainty is something that will always be around in every experiment and we can't get rid of it so we try to minimize it before we explain uncertainty we need to explain the difference between two other words first measurements and readings a reading is when you take a single judgment for example on a thermometer or a digital meter such as an ammeter your initial value the start point is predetermined a measurement however is two judgments when you're using the ruler you have to make a judgment on where to begin your measurement and where to end your measurement you place the zero mark on a spot and you have to determine where the end point is yourself. Therefore, there's uncertainty in both of those judgments that you've made. Uncertainty comes in three different forms and they're all quite distinct. Absolute uncertainty is the actual uncertainty in a reading. So using the ruler example again, plus or minus one millimeter on a ruler is the actual uncertainty or the absolute uncertainty. If you were to get a measurement of five centimeters using a normal meter ruler, that could actually be in the ranges of 4.9 to 5.1 centimeters as the absolute uncertainty is one millimeter. Percentage uncertainty, given this symbol, a little fancy E called epsilon, is the percentage of the reading that it could differ by. So say, plus or minus 2% of five. So that five could be in a ranges of 4.9 to five. Point one again. To get the absolute uncertainty of a reading, it's plus or minus half of the smallest scale division. So on a thermometer, it goes up in one degree Celsius. So it'll be half a degree Celsius. For a measurement, since it's two judgments, it's just the smallest scale division. So again, using your ruler, just one millimeter. We often have to find percentage error of a repeated reading though as we try to reduce random errors. We do this by dividing half the range of the values by the mean value then again times it by 100 to get the percentage. 
match. We have a table of five values, 23, 25, 29, 27, 22. We find the mean of said values by adding them together, then divided them by five, which is 25.2. The range is largest minus smallest value, so seven. Half the range is 3.5, so 3.5 divided by 25.2 times by 100 to get a percentage. 13.9%. What baffled me when I was learning this is how does absolute uncertainty affect percentage uncertainty of repeated readings? And in the AQA, A-level physics course, it doesn't. What we often do in science and what you'll have done all throughout GCSE and will in A-level is draw graphs. You'll need to choose an appropriate scale for your graph and have your data over at least half of said graph in the exam. Otherwise, your scale is not appropriate and you don't get the marks. Also to label your axes, write the quantity, put a slash, than the units. You can plot your data using quite a lot of things, but I used crosses. Just make sure that you don't use dots so that the actual individual points are very clear. Now, what you won't have come across is error bars. Error bars just show the uncertainty in the reading on the graph, essentially. You plot mean values on the graph, so there's an uncertainty in said values, which is half the range of the data. So an error bar would be plus or minus half the range of the data. The line of best fit goes through as many points as possible or as close to them as possible. To find the gradient of your line of best fit, draw as large a triangle as you can, then find the change in y and change in x, rise over run. The worst acceptable line of best fit is a line of best fit that barely goes through the arrow bars, so it's still a good line just could be better. The reason we do this is to quantify the uncertainty in the data so you can find the percentage of uncertainty in the gradient to do this. Another thing we can do is to combine uncertainty. To find combined or final uncertainty, we take into account every reading. So here are some examples. If you have an equation, say x equals y plus z, the absolute uncertainty in x is equal to the absolute uncertainty in y plus the absolute uncertainty in Z. We don't usually need this. It's not actually that useful. We're more interested in percentage uncertainty. So say you had an equation, X equals Y, Z. This could be an actual physics equation like F equals MA or something of the sort. For this example, X equals Y, Z. The, the percentage uncertainty in X is the same as the percentage uncertainty in Y add the percentage uncertainty in Z. If we have another equation, X equals Y divided by Z, the percentage uncertainty in X exactly the same as before, percentage uncertainty in y added the percentage uncertainty in z. If we have another equation, say x equals y squared, the percentage uncertainty in x equals the percentage uncertainty in y times two. You have two lots of the uncertainty there. Doesn't matter if they're divided time, if they're doing backflips, the uncertainty is always there, which is exactly why you just add them together. Trust me, this is the end of the really boring and dull parts, but it's best to get them out of the way early. Next video is Stone Particles, which is my personal favorite in all of A-level physics. The website has all of these videos, neatly organized, has exam question packs, walkthroughs, uni advice, Thank you for watching, enjoy the next video.